Alrighty, yeah, thanks for joining. And then, oh, we have uh, so many people here, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no surprise, it's a Friday afternoon, almost uh, lunch time. And by the way, I'm local here, I'm living in the Brooklyn. So uh, I just walk in here, 25 minutes. It's a uh, very nice weather <laughs> to walk in. So, okay, so I'm going to be talk about the serverless in Java and more uh, not lock-in technology, more vendor neutral stuff here. So I have uh, one question. So anyone have some experience with, like a serverless before, like uh, some any like uh, Amazon Lambda, something like that? Do you have that? Okay, what is your experience? Is it horrible and then too cost expensive? Oh, okay, no problem, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Any, any, any issue, any concern when you deploy your Python to Amazon Lambda or any serverless? Not too much, okay. Oh, yeah, pretty much good. <laughs> All right, thanks for sharing. So my name is Daniel Rowe. I'm uh, working from Red Hat as a developer advocate. I'm local here, living in Boston and yeah, Brook Ryan. And then I'm Java champion and I'm like a, like a CNCF ambassador for the last six years. Uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot to community, back to community. Uh, and then I specialize in like cloud native runtime, like a pretty much Java, JavaScript. And also uh, these days, everybody's doing AI. So I'm also needed to, uh, uh, needed to do some AI stuff as well. So AI, and like a GitOps and then serverless and then service mesh and then among others. I mean, here's my contact information, Daniel030. So there are so many Daniel around the world. So I may be Doris Daniel. So here's my stuff here. All right. So so what why people needed to uh, serverless? And then you know that because uh, there are many reasons actually. So but traditionally you can deploy your application, doesn't matter, Java, .NET, Python, and then, so you have some dedicated resources, like CPU, memory, disk, storage, networking, and so on, and then you cannot uh, measure exact uh, resources for your application workload. So that's why sometimes you over-provision or under-provision. So over-provision maybe is, better than under-provision, because under-provision, and then you have a lack of resources, for example, you have maybe out of memory or some of the exception, uh, because you have a, some end user, like 100 people every single day, but you have a, some big seasonal event, like a Black Friday, and then you expect, okay, we probably like 1,000 people, but you actually have maybe 10,000 people, and then your web page just go off like a, just a blue screen, some stuff. So under provisioning or over provisioning, but oh, next year where we're gonna expect 10,000 people guess, but it turns out just like a 500 people. And then it totally over provision, it spent a lot of money, prepare the resources, but it's a waste of your time and effort. So that's why serverless actually came out. Okay, we just try to provision whatever you need uh, in a real time based on your actual application workload. And then serverless is going down like a hibernate whenever you don't have any resources. That is the beauty of a serverless. And then here's a many interesting survey from like a CNCF and, and or like IDC stuff. And then most people have some concern pretty much from IT ops team or a cloud team or like a platform engineering team. Hey, you spend too money, too much resources, CPU memory, to run your application. It turns out you just uh, spend like a less than 30% of your resource utilization because they keep monitoring, okay, so you don't even, even reach out to over 70%, only like a 30% or 25%, something like that. So what about Java? So as you know, so a lot of people are actually more interested in using other languages, like JavaScript, Golang, Python, and rather than Java, because Java uh, seems to too heavy way to run your application. You know what? Whenever you deploy your application to serverless, for example, Amazon Lambda, 
it's all about money. So when you run your serverless application more than 10 minutes, it's a lot of money for that. So whenever you try to deploy your app to serverless, it makes a smaller and then a faster rather than heavy way and then slow runtime. So that's people just, oh, Java is not good for serverless in the past. Because one of the big challenges for Java, so Java actually takes a long time to start up. When you run your application on JVM, Java Virtual Machine, it takes some time to warm up. Maybe it takes some 10 seconds or even one minute or even like a 10 minutes, depends on how big your application is. And previously, like a web logic or a middleware server, it takes a couple minutes or even 10 minutes to start up. And then, so currently the microservices like a, like a Spring Boot, Quarkus, or some of the other Java framework, it's a way faster than all the middleware technology, but still a couple seconds to start up. So, more and more like a younger generation, for example, my son, like a totally middle school age, like a Gen Z <laughs> stuff. And then after like a couple of seconds, he just leave. Whenever he tried to watch some video, like a YouTube, TikTok, anything, and then three seconds, like a blank, okay, not work. And then I'm not seeing anymore, and then just leave. So a couple of seconds, maybe you feel, oh, it's not too long, but uh, it depends on your targeting audiences. So sometimes the two seconds, three seconds, it's a two, slow. And then Java basically traditionally takes a couple of seconds to start up as a warmer. And then that's the modern Java framework, for example, Quarkus invented by Red Hat, but we actually moving to Common House. It's a non-commercial organization to manage many Java projects, like a Hibernate or any, like a J-releaser and a Quarkus as well. And Quarkus actually applied for a couple of months ago, and now it's uh, in process to approve uh, the open source project under that organization. So one of the big goal of Quarkus to provide high performance and a fast application, also developer uh, productivities. So here's just some numbers example. So you can have like a small memory footprint as well as a fast startup time. For example, so the first when you develop like a, a few web services like a RESTful APIs with the Quarkus, with the GraalVM, like a native compilation, which he create executable file, just like a EXE extension file in Windows operating system. And then you can just run that executable file without Java virtual machine, literally executable file. And then just like a couple RESTful API with the executable file, it takes less than like a 15 milliseconds. It just uh, happened when you blink to your eye, really fast. And then, but some people say, yeah, so one second or two seconds or 100 milliseconds is uh, totally the same to me because still really fast to me. But just imagine that you don't have uh, only one application in your company, in your organization, you probably have maybe 1,000 applications to serve your business services. And then you can multiply one second, multiply 1,000 or even million. And it's a huge number and the cost and the start of time. So a little bit a step back to understand the journey of a serverless in the back in 2013, you probably remember correctly, the Amazon Lambda was born and then unleashed upon the world to serve the like serverless. The main goal of Amazon Lambda, okay, there are a lot of startup companies and the maybe gaming company or dot com companies. Okay, you want to try to stand up your business service on mobile or the web application, but you don't have enough people to maintain your application, but also platform infrastructure. How do you do that? We can give you some infrastructure with a serverless. You just upload your application, and then we're going to take care of the rest of them. You just use that. That, is a, that was born serverless. And the limited uh, resources and the runtime, specific Java framework. And then it, some people actually 
installed. This is just a one-time happening, like some event services on Amazon, but that was not true. And then more and more enterprise companies and public cloud provider started providing serverless services, like Amazon Lambda, and then Google Function, Azure Function, and IBM, and a lot of open source company, open source project also provide that kind of stuff. So one of the big challenges when you try to use some public cloud provider serverless platform, you definitely lock it in there. As you just call snippet, this is actually my uh, call snippet, and you can see that there are Amazon, some package in Java. If you use some other program language, you still use their public cl providers SDK or API. And then this is a, some kind of this kind of stuff, but that's not the end. You can also have some other issue. The serverless is not just silverbullet, not unicorn. So you also need to think about some regularity on the specific area, specific city, like a European or some North America. And then what's the happen outrage? You remember that uh, global outrage uh, like uh, almost a month ago in the like, Windows stuff? I actually was traveling to Berlin. There were a We Are Developers Conference. There are more than like, uh, 15,000 developers were there. And then I just finished my couple talk session and the workshop. And then I uh, staying, chilling uh, my feeling. And then, oh, I got some some alarm message, hey, something happened, and all like an airport check-in system is uh, messed up, and you cannot check in. So what do I do? And oh, you can go to the airport, and then everybody rush into the airport, everybody like uh, delayed, you know, most kind of stuff. I actually stayed a couple more days in Berlin. That was not my plan, though. And then, and then back to the uh, Boston, and I have another business trip just a couple of days later to Raleigh, and then my flight from Boston to Raleigh is just a couple of hours. And then the flight delayed seven hours. And then so, but some people actually, my colleagues, some of my colleagues actually couldn't make it because of the flight delayed several times and ended up with the cancel. So this global outrage, we rely on some specific uh, public cloud providers. And then sometimes you cannot control. You're just waiting for fix the problem. And then the global outreach, the Windows and the cloud strike, it took more than one week, or probably two weeks to fix that problem. And then there are more, uh, some of the potential challenges uh, will come to you whenever you're sticking around the one specific service sub provider uh, with that. And then, uh, so that's the, uh, and, then, and also the biggest challenge for that is the lock-in technology. As a developer and software engineer perspective, okay, so I wanted to develop my business services just once. And then I just need to let my application deploy to some production, doesn't matter, serverless or just a normal application on Kubernetes or just cloud or a virtual machine bare metal. That's not my job. And then one day your new CTO just uh, uh, give us some big announcement. Okay, we're gonna go to Azure from Amazon. Why? And then, oh, because we are cre uh, creating new branch in somewhere Europe. And then they gave some promotion. If you use Azure rather than Amazon, and we're gonna 50% discount for the next three years. Okay, why not? And okay, so now I save our money, and then now we're gonna deploy our existing service in the Azure with the serverless. And then, okay, and then the platform guys, okay, that's not my job. Okay, the developer need to figure it out. And developers, okay, I need to learn SDK API and the stupid documentation from Microsoft to run some kind of stuff, no offense, right though. And then, so this is all happening all the time. But what if, and then more and more enterprise companies actually want to move, go to hybrid cloud or multi-cloud, which means that you, whenever you create a new application, you shouldn't be tied in to some specific providers. Any time your application could be, should be deployed to any platform, make us some more cloud agnostic, 
uh, rather than like a tie in or lock in some vendor technology. So here is a one example. Actually, Java and Quarkus actually uh, figured that problem. So give us some some one library which is a, a funky, which is a so interesting name. So one annotation of funk here, which allows Java developer uh, to make uh, your serverless function cloud agnostic. And then the developer only need to put on the one like a funk annotation on top of the method or the class level. And then the Java framework automatically generate necessary file to specific cloud providers or in uh, on-prem your Kubernetes cluster. So you can also create to create a simple serverless application project with some uh, command line uh, from scratch as well. I'm gonna give you some demo how that works in a couple of minutes later. So and then serverless actually keep evolving. Uh, beginning Amazon Lambda back in 2013 and after a couple of years, and then it going to containers. Previously, when you run serverless on Amazon Lambda, which is like a virtual machine. And then 2014, Kubernetes came out and Docker container. And then, okay, everybody's going to container. And then whenever you deploy your app into production, you need to containerize your application as a, like a container image, starting from Docker, and then now pretty much like an OCI artifact, like a more like a uh, standard format to containerize and packaging your application. With that, okay, so because a lot of company and a lot of people, hey, we already are going to container Kubernetes. And then what if we could run same app or different app as a container for serverless? And then the container, like a pod on Kubernetes is running all the time. Sometimes it just kill and the restart the, as beauty of the Kubernetes health check, but it's running all the time. So what if we could run that container pod as a serverless, like Amazon Lambda, which is just awesome. That is a serverless container using uh, K-native project, one of the CNCF stuff. So here's just some example. Uh, uh, so here's just some examples of container stuff uh, without Kubernetes. Every public uh, cloud provider, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and other, among others, like uh, uh, what is that, uh, Alibaba Cloud as well. So they provide a container service as well, like a EKS, AKS, something like that, which means they also provide a serverless uh, container services as well uh, as a, like a SASE services. And then, for example, here, Azure function, and you can actually uh, deploy your Java or Python or .NET app on Azure function. But behind the scene, there are many infrastructure actually stand up networking and routing or storage, like a FT3 bucket, and the monitoring, and among others, is all necessary as the uh, underneath the technology. But that's not for free. You also need to pay for that. But I just want to deploy my simple app, but you spend a lot of money to get support the behind the technology. But also, you also uh, lock in this Azure technology stack. So what, what, uh, what is the solution or alternative way to figure it out and solve this challenge? Everybody look around, okay, what is the most the biggest open source project and landscape, which is a CNCF most likely. And then when you go to CNCF project and the serverless or any other, like, uh, perspective, there are many projects, more than 100, maybe, maybe thousands of stuff, too many choices. And then K-Neighbor project, one of them, it actually gives some more, like some uh, comprehensive way how to manage, deploy, and configure your uh, normal application as serverless on top of the Kubernetes. And then now the journey actually arrived in state and like uh, integration. So for example, at the very beginning, your serverless application pretty much is stateless, like a simple hello world, something like that. But in reality, in the production, in the enterprise company, hello world is not my application, not our business application. We have many applications communicate with like a 
like a database, like a store, or cache, or messaging broker, like a Kafka stuff. So in the reality, it always have uh, some status, rather than status. So we cannot ignore that demand to serve your application as a serverless on top of the like a platform. So that's why evolving your serverless beginning from status on Amazon Lambda and to more integration status, like uh, integration with your integration server, for example, Kafka cluster or Apache Pursa or as a messaging broker or even like a database or a NoSQL database or some vector database, something like that. So in order to uh, integration with the serverless application, you might also think about so the messaging format. Some people, yeah, we're gonna create a messaging from this JSON or product above like a binary or just some of the uh, like a, a low format. So the cloud event uh, the other project to give us a standard uh, specification to communicate the multi uh, infrastructure for integration infrastructure. Here's just some example uh, for that. So Knave eventing uh, source could be Kafka, could be messaging broker, could be like a Redis uh, streamings. They actually are uh, gathering some event and then uh, sending out to some broker and then broker actually uh, uh, communicate with the another trigger and then trigger actually called your serverless function. So for example, I have some application like an online shopping application and then whenever uh, uh, try to, some people order the shopping car and then it literally together in my Kafka topic as an event. And then that event call my serverless function. And then it scale up automatically. And then everybody should go to bed like a, after midnight, no more like a ordering and no more a print the shopping cart. And then it automatically scale down my like a order application or the shopping cart application, things like that. So, I'm gonna give you some uh, quick demo today, and then it's a little bit more interactive demo today rather than just show cooking style, some of the stuff. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go to, uh, no, share again. Okay, so this is uh, uh, some fun survey here. I don't know how many people are actually developing some application here. Uh, and then here is just some uh, ID tools, like uh, IntelliJ or VS Code, like a Microsoft a Visual Studio Code, and Eclipse, or I am like a pretty old generation, like a, like a VI, something like that, and other, and the OpenShift to Dev Spaces, which is a cloud ID. So more and more like a platform engineer IT ops team wants to give us some standard ID model for developer rather than give us some full authority for developer group for security, performance, and resource limitation. So here's a few things, and then I'm gonna share the QR code. You can actually scan the, your mobile phone, and then touch and select uh, with your uh, favorite, or uh, you uh, usually use the ID tool here. And then so behind the scene, back end there, so the, when you scan the QR code, you can see the quick UI, uh, UI which is the UI also running on serverless here. And then their ingester also serverless. Ingester, when you're tapping your mobile phone, that event coming to the Kafka topic. And the Kafka topic try to ingest and process that topic messaging, they're also serverless. So if you keep topping so many times, doesn't matter, same answer, different answer, it keep coming to my Kafka and then it scale out my uh, container file based on serverless. And then there are some databases as well, uh, PostgreSQL to store your uh, survey result as well. So here we go. So scan the, this QR code and then you can bet on that. So let me give you some, don't start. I'm gonna give you some cues, just don't start right now. Just secure, uh, scan the QR code right now. And then, okay. And then here is uh, my, uh, Oh, someone, yeah, someone actually tried to access it here. Okay, 
Someone already is tapping. I know that because you, you can see that. So this is my uh, Kubernetes cluster based on OpenShift. And then you can see that this is uh, uh, my Kafka cluster. And then this is a PostgreSQL to store your survey result. But I'm not gonna uh, sell this survey result to any third party company. I'm gonna uh, terminate this cluster after my demo. And then this is uh, my UI. So as you can see, it's uh, literally terminating, which means that this is a really subarrest. Don't actually give some input or tapping and then you feel, okay, no more uh, coming networking, and then this is subrest going down just like here. So zero pot, I'm gonna save my money right now. And then here is a, a processor. If the processor is not subrest at this demo because the processor, I'm gonna give it up uh, running all the time, uh, could be outside the operation, outside the Kubernetes to process it. Not only this application, but also any other application. So you can also, run this processor as a serverless as well. But I just give some another possibility to uh, process your business load. And then this is ingester, also serverless. And then it's also terminating uh, because someone actually tried uh, tapping. I know who it is. Anyway, so it's also going down. Okay, so I'm gonna try to split my window to here and then Everybody scan this QR code. Okay, now starting to tapping whatever you want, many times, thousand times, until your hand shaking. And then now you can see that. So UI is so you can see the automatic scale up. So now two part, you can see that three part. If you keep harder, harder, and it going more than like a ten, let's make a hundred, <laughs> and then. You can see another container part. It's an ingester, it's just one. That's it. And then when I go to the URL, the UI, let me sh uh, open the UI here. No, no, this one. This is the UI. There we go. And then, oh, we have already 1,000 uh, OpenShift Dev Space. And then I got some of the stuff here. And then if I try to, okay, I know you got a hard work today and then so many tapping and then we are uh, waiting for lunch box and then you're so starving. So maybe you don't have a good enough energy to tap in right now, but thanks for participating. So I'm gonna give some try my hacking uh, magic script here. So this is actually a project and I'm gonna to hey, which is a, this best uh, bash script uh, generate a dummy like a thousand like, tapping stuff in a second, and then I'm gonna create that and then go back to my project. Okay. So it going to yeah, yeah I just uh, more than ten response here, and then it's going up really fast. Uh, the scaling in the end. So ingester here, yeah. So if I try to several more time, it's gonna be uh, scaled out. So last time when I showed that the same demo in other conference, there are more than like uh, 500 people and everybody crazy uh, tapping the phone because uh, I uh, brought some of my new book around the subarrest and then uh, like uh, some platform engineering stuff and brought some like uh, 10 or 15 books, paper books. And then a lot of people actually try to get that book as a reword. And then a lot of people was really hardly tapping. And then you know, that was really fun stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna go to make sure again. So here's the uh, GitHub URL. My colleague and I, we created the Camel Quark supporter. And you can follow my Twitter or uh, YouTube channel. You can find a more technical video around that thing. And then um, my colleague, Kevin DeVore, he is also a Java champion uh, with me. And then we are actually writing uh, serverless Java in action with many. We already finished like a, almost 
it's going to be published as online subscription like me. If you follow my Twitter or subscribe my channel, I'm going to uh, give some share like a free code to access that uh, uh, ebook stuff as well. And then here's my uh, YouTube handler, like a bit new URL, Daniel TV or YouTube, like a Daniel 30 again. And then yeah, feel free to watch some more demo and uh, ask some question around uh, any uh, some technical stuff, serverless AI and among others. And then I'm more than happy to address question and then uh, got some inspiration from you to make a new Facebook video. That's it. I think it's on time. And then any question? Everybody's starving, and then go some food. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks for uh, coming here today. Have a good one. Yeah, you're still doing that.